Hi, I'm going to show you how to make a whole bunch of different visuals in Seaborn in just a few minutes with very little effort. Please don't pay for any Seaborn tutorials. You can learn this package in minutes and you'll be able to make a visual similar to what we see here, which is a modified scatter plot. So let's dive in. So the first thing we want to be able to do is import our Seaborn package and we're importing that and saving it as the variable SB. Once we have that variable, we're able to use some of the functions within that package. For example, we can look at the, all the data sets that we have available in the Seaborn package and you can see all of them here. And we're going to use quite a few of them. Next, let me tell you about the basic structure of a Seaborn plot, where we're bringing in the Seaborn package. We saved ours as SB. We're using a particular plot function. We're passing in the data that we are concerned with. We're defining the X and Y variables, and then we may use a grouping variable. And there are a whole host of different parameters within this function, but I want to stick to the basics at first. So let's make your first plot. So let's get some data. So we want to be able to use that SB, but we want to be able to save it as a variable data or any variable you like, DF. And then I'm going to do low data sets. And I'm going to load in my Titanic data set. And let's look at the first five rows of that data set. So if I run that, we can see that we have all these different variables that we can bring in. I am going to create my first graph and I'm going to just create a count plot. So a count plot is just going to count your categorical uh, variables. So I'm going to look for things that are categorical. So I'm going to use SB, which is our function. And then I'm going to use count plot. I'm going to pass in data equals data, but I can shift and tab and show you this. So the first thing we want to be able to pass in is our data. I'm going to define my X, which I am going to count this column, which is sex, and run this. And now you can see a count plot, just that easy. So it's a very easy way to create a visual. Of course, we can orient this by changing it to Y and changing it to a bar. A bar plot which is more on the horizontal end we can also use that categorical grouping that we talked about with hue so we can look for another categorical here so I can look at something like who survived And we can see a live yes and no. We can pass that in with our hue. So I run this. And now we have a different grouping. So let's put on our hyperspeed boots. And we're going to go through this very quickly on how to create a whole bunch of different charts. So let's focus on univariate analysis where we're looking at continuous and Categorical plots, we can see all the different continuous plots for one variable, which is univariate analysis. We got histogram, box plots, box and plots, rug plots, violin plots, KDE plots, strip plots. And we were able to create a categorical plot with our count plot just like we did above. So I'm going to do that process again over. I'm going to load in my data set. I'm using the exercise data set. We can see the data set here with the data set head, the first five rows. I created a histogram by using the his plot. And we can see all I did was pass in data equals data, define my X 
variable which was the pulse of the individual based on that data. We can create a box plot just as easily. A box and plot which is a modified box plot which gives us a similar distribution like a box plot but just gives us a little bit more quartile information. We have a violin plot and the only thing that we're changing is the first section of our function. So you can really copy and paste that. You, all you're doing is changing the name of the actual graph. So we can go down and look at rug plot. All I do is change violin plot to rug plot. None of the internals change. And the rug plot's not that interesting. We can see that most it's a distribution plot, but we'll see how we can combine these to get a little bit more bang for our buck when we are using these visuals. So I can change that to a KDE plot. And of course, each one of these visuals have their own parameters for styling. So you can see if I click shift tab, we can see this has a shade parameter we can add. So let's just add that. Pulls true. And we can see that we have that shaded now. We can use a strip plot, which also gives us a distribution. All we're doing is changing the first part of that. Of course, you can continue to style this plot, but we'll see about this a little bit later. We can use a swarm plot, which gets rid of some of what we call the jitter and makes this a little bit tighter. ECDF plots which allows us also to see the distribution uh, similar to a histogram where we can see the proportion of the data here. Like using that grouping variable hue, you can see that we can get a lot of different information here where we're looking at the low fat diet and the non fat diet. And if we use the hue, we can group our data a little bit differently so we can see the proportions a little bit better. So we talked about combining charts. So what I've done here is I've combined the KDE plot with our hue parameter. And then I've used the rug plot also to show the, the distribution at the bottom. It's not that fantastic, but I'm going to show you how to combine charts a little bit more when we jump into bivariate analysis. So let's make some plots focusing on two variables. So let's make some plots. We can make scatter plots, LMP plots, rig plots, hex plots, pair plots, uh, and uh, another type of KDE plot, which is bivariate. And for categorical, we can use line plots, bar plots, and point plots, with, where we're looking at categorical and continuous. So we're going to do that same thing where we load in our data set and we look at the head. We're looking at the passenger data set. So let's dive into some categoricals. So we can see that the year is here. And if I look at the year as a category and the X axis and passengers as continuous, we can get a nice line plot by just changing the first part of that structure. Then we can get a point plot here which also shows us a similar structure, but just where the line has the variations there. We can also use a bar plot, which groups it continuously and gets the sum of passengers for each year. So let's load in our diamonds data set, and we are going to start looking at some other data. Now I sampled this data because it's quite big. I think it's a 15,000 row data set or 59,000 row data set. So I just took the first 3,000 rows with the sample. And then I am creating a bivariate chart, which is a scatter plot, just changing scatter. But now you see we've added another variable to our structure. We load in our data, we get X, 
y, and so we're defining x as caret and y as price, and we're able to get the scatter plot. We can add other parameters to that scatter plot, such as the marker. So it's the same scatter plot, I just changed the marker here. Now we can use KDE plots as a scatter plot where we get a different form where we can see the density is much more dense here, which is similar here where you see the darkness in the scatter plot. Of course, we can fill that KDE plot with a parameter here and use a color mapping, which is a gradation, which gives you quite a dynamic way to see a bivariate analysis between carrot and price, bivariate relationship. We can also use a his plot and we can create a scatter plot that looks more like a, a digitized or histogram, but in a bivariate fashion. So we can actually combine those two to make something a little bit interesting where we can see the density of our scatter plot here. And we can also see the, the map across that. We could fill that scatter plot, but I thought this was quite interesting. So that's what combining different statistical charts will give us. We can use a joint plot that also takes that X and Y, and it gives us the histogram on the sides of each one of our variable in their scatter plot. We can also use the type of joint plot that we want. We can pass in the hex that is similar to our histogram where we're able to see uh, the scatter plot focused in this manner. So you can get quite creative. Next, we get our LMP plot, which is our kind of regression plot. We pass in our X and Y variables. I'm using a marker as a point just to get that scatter plot a little bit more focused. And then I'm using the line keyword here so we can see that regression line. And I made that red. So plotting relationships. So now we can start looking at the relationship or grid that is available to us sometime in some of our plots. So I'm using a relationship, a rail plot, which is a relationship plot, using that same structure, passing in our data, X and Y. This time I'm adding a column for cut, which is a categorical, so we can see the different cuts for each one of our scatters. So we are already adding an additional relationship to that scatter plot. Let's load in the data set tips, look at the first five rows, and what we're going to do is start using a little bit more of that grid that we have access to. And that grid is called facet grid. So in the facet grid, we can define the columns and rows so I define the columns as a smoker and the, and the row as sex, and we can map any type of plot we want there. So I map box plots and I've used the total bill and we are able to create this visual. So the mapping function here, you pass in the plot with your seaborne variable and then you have your X or your variable that you want to analyze. Pair plot will give you a lot of that where you just pass in your whole data set to your pair plot and it will give you all the visuals for categorical and univariate and bivariate analysis. The last thing we want to look at is correlations. I'm bringing in that da diamonds data set again, getting the head. This time I'm bringing in everything. So here is our data. I want to be able to look at correlation. So I pass in my data set, give it the correlation function, and we get a correlation heat map, which is the heat map function here. And we're able to get this heat map. 
we can stylize that heat map to make it look a lot better by bringing in annotations, which are the actual numbers, in the line widths. And finally, we can isolate a heat map by just saying, okay, I don't want to see each one of the variables. I want to see how they're related to one of those variables, which is price. So you can create your heat map in the same fashion you've done above, but just put in price as a double bracket and you will be able to see how everything is related to price and how well correlated it is. I hope that gave you a very quick and easy way to use Seaborn. I would love to see some of your later visuals. Thank you.